Hallelujah. Today I want to speak on a topic that God has laid on my heart. And the topic for today is be alert and sober. Be alert and sober. Be alert and sober. And I just want to quickly give the definitions that I got from the words alert and sober. And I took the definitions that are relevant, you know, for the context of my message. Now, to be alert is to be able to quickly perceive matters and take appropriate action to prevent disaster or catastrophe. So, sorry, yeah, so to take, sorry, I got into another definition, but I want to quickly repeat. It's to quickly to take notice of any unusual and potentially dangerous or difficult situation. The other definitions are vigilant, wide awake, the state of being watchful for possible danger. So in my message, I'll be, you know, interchanging the words alert, vigilant, you know, watchful. It means the same things. And then the definition of sober, which is relevant in the context of my message, is serious. A sober person is a serious person or sensible person. Now, when we look at our day-to-day -day living activities, I just want to give you one example, such as driving. When you are driving a car, those of us who drive, and even those of you who don't drive but sit in the passenger seat, sometimes you stay alert for the driver, right? And then you say, like my mom, my dad will say, your mom couldn't learn how to drive. But any time that I'm driving, <laughs> she will say, hey, dada, break. Hey, that a slow down, <laughs> you know, traffic light. You know, she stays alert for the driver. But for us drivers, we stay alert for dangerous situations around us, such as pedestrians crossing the road, children playing on the curbs, riding their bikes and getting onto the road. You stay alert for the traffic light turning red. You stay alert for other cars even straddling the lanes to come, you know, into your lane. And with that alertness, you know, you focus so much on the road. Your eyes are fixated on the road. And even your ears are as well are alert, right? Because when you hear a noise, you might tend to stop the car and check whether there is a fault or maybe your exhaust has removed. But today, I want to talk about another alertness, okay? Because, for instance, when I said that if you are driving a car and you don't stay alert, you can end up in an accident and do what? Lose your life or kill somebody crossing the road or damage your car, damage a part of your body. Even if you are cooking and you don't stay alert, you might end up catching fire in your kitchen. But today, I want to talk about another alertness that we have to be mindful of. And that one is spiritual. Hallelujah. We need to be spiritually alert. And it is important, even as you stay alert, for instance, driving so that you don't lose your life, it's also important to stay alert spiritually so that you don't lose your soul. Hallelujah. Now, we would be reading some key scriptures, maybe not all, for this message. First Peter 5, verse 8, you can write them down. First Peter 4, 7. First Peter 1, 13 to 15. And then First Corinthians 16, verse 13. Okay, so what do we need to be alert of? What 
do we need as Christians to be alert of? One, when we read 1 Peter 5, 8, can you please project it? 1 Peter 5, 8, or if anybody is there, you can quickly read for us. Somebody can get ready with Luke 12, 15. And then Philippians 3, 2. So it says that 1 Peter 5, 8, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a lion, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So it means that we have to stay alert of the devil, number one. We have to stay alert of Satan and all his schemes that he comes with. The Bible says that he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we have to stay alert of Satan, number one, and his schemes. The second thing that we have to stay alert for or of can be found in Luke 12, verse 15. He says then, then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Watch out. Watch out. Which is alert. Be vigilant. So we have to be watchful and alert of the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh. Watch out for the lies. Watch out for immoral things. Watch out for, you know, pornography. If you are here and you've been watching pornographic things, you have to watch out for them because they are all works of the flesh. When you go to Galatians 5, it lists some of the, you know, works of the flesh or evil that we need to watch out for. Now let's read Philippians 3 2 to look at the next thing that we have to watch out for. Philippians 3 and verse 2. It says, Jesus said, Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of, sorry, it was Paul rather saying, Watch out, not Jesus. Oh, pardon me. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. So this is another thing that we have to watch out for. Now Paul labels, you know, the dogs as the teachers of Judaism. In that time, these teachers, you know, will impose certain works of the law and ceremonial um, things of the law upon the people. But then, to, and they, found, they, they thought that that's, those things were necessary for purity and salvation. But they, they themselves were not pure. They did not even abide by the laws. So Paul was telling the Philippian church to watch out for them. They were evildoers. In our time, it will not be the teachers of Judaism, but then it will be teachers of certain religious sects that we may listen to with, you know, WhatsApp and everything just going viral and around like that. Sometimes if you are not careful, you know, you may be drawn into some of the things that these people you know, tell us to do. For instance, I had a friend years ago when she lost her husband. She was asked by the husband's family who proclaimed to be Christians to go and wash, you know, in the sea. And they brought some beads for her to put around her waist. All these things, where can we find them in the Bible? We can't, we, it's not written anywhere in the Bible, that when you lose your husband, go and wash in the sea. So we have to watch out, you know, for these things. And 
By them telling her, they were implying that then she purifies herself and separates herself from her dead husband. So please, let us watch out for these things. Another thing that we have to watch out for, which Jesus said, was in Matthew 7, 15. Can you please project it? Or to be alert and vigilant of Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7 and verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. We've got to watch out for these prophets. You know, the Bible clearly tells us that in the last days, many false prophets would, would come up. And for these false prophets, they have not come to seek the interest of the people. What they have come to do is to seek their own interests. They are not there to give salvation to people. They just take advantage of people. They take advantage. They, they seek to take whatever they can from people to enrich themselves. So you, we have to be alert and watch out for these false prophets. They ravage the souls of men with their heresies, myths, philosophies, and ideologies. Jesus and the apostles, Paul and Peter, urge us to be awake and sober or serious and not, not to neglect the significant danger surrounding us. You and I know well that in these times we are surrounded by so many danger. So, 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 so many danger. And therefore, we ought to be serious with our Christian lives. We ought to be vigilant and we ought to be alert. Hallelujah. I want to just mention the importance of staying alert and sober. The importance of staying alert and sober. You are an alertful person. You are able to quickly, you know, perceive matters. And then you take appropriate action to prevent disaster or a catastrophe. Or when you are an alert person, it makes you keenly aware of your environment and ready to respond in all circumstances with wisdom and discernment. Hallelujah. So these are the importance of staying alert. If you don't stay alert as a Christian, you may end up losing your salvation. You may end up losing your soul. Developing a spirit of alertness is the godly character that will greatly benefit the protection of your soul. Now, why are Jesus and the apostles, Paul, urging us to be alert and sober? Why are they, you know, urging us to be alert and sober? We'll go to Matthew 25, 1 to 13. We will not read the whole, but then we'll read maybe 10, the 10 to 13. But then it, it talks about Jesus telling us a popular parable, which probably you and I know from Sunday school. And it talks, Jesus talks about the parable of the ten virgins. The parable of the ten virgins. Now these ten virgins set out with their lamps, as the story is told in the Bible. And the Bible says that five of them were foolish and the other five were wise. Now the wise ones, when they set out on the journey to meet the bridegroom, took extra oil 
in jars, but the foolish ones did not. And the Bible tells us that the bridegroom was delayed and they became drowsy and they fell asleep. But then at midnight, midnight, at midnight, there was a cry. Here comes the bridegroom. Here comes the bridegroom. Let us come in. And when they heard the cry, they awake, awoke and then they trimmed their lamps. That's what the Bible says. But then the foolish five virgins realized that their lamps were going down. So they asked the five wise virgins, give us some of your oil. They said, we don't have enough. We can't give you. So this takes us to the point that we all have to work out our salvation. Okay? I can't work out my salvation and transfer some to you. Everybody has to work his or her own salvation. <laughs> so what happened? The five foolish ones set back to the town to get more oil. Can you please project the 10 to 13? There is a word there that I want us to be mindful of. It says, but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready, who were ready, are you ready, my brother? Are you ready, my sister? Are you ready at any time for the coming, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are you ready? It says that, so they were ready and went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Can we move on, please? Later, the others who were the foolish ones also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch. That's what Jesus is telling us this morning. Therefore, keep alert. Therefore, keep vigilant. Because you do not know the day or the hour. So the reason why Jesus Christ and the apostles are telling us to keep watch is that we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. When our Lord Jesus Christ will come again, we don't want to be Caught on, it will come, you know, just within a twinkle of an eye. And it is my prayer that you and I will be ready. You and I will be prepared. You and I will be serious with our Christian lives. You and I will not compromise to, the lit, to, 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 to something saying, oh, this one, let me do it small, you know. Let me do it small. The time that maybe you decide to do that once more, that is the time probably the Lord may come. And you will not have the chance to confess your sins and ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. So brethren, let us be watchful. Let us be alert. I didn't know what I was going to preach when I was put on the program, but I just prayed. And, and this message came so strongly. I don't know why this message is coming so strongly at this time. But because God loves us, and his word says that he doesn't want anyone to suffer wrath, but he wants each and every one of us to receive salvation. Hallelujah. Right. <clears throat> So, as I said, the reason why Jesus and the apostles are telling us to keep alert is just so that when Jesus Christ comes again, we will be ready. Now, let's read First Thessalonians 5, 2 
and then 4 to 6 and verse 9. So 1 Thessalonians 2, right? It says, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Verse 4 to 6. But you, but you brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. Let's read the verse 9. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is one of the reasons that we need to stay alert. Because the day of the Lord will come like a thief. When a thief is coming to steal something from your house, they will not come and tell you, that they are coming, so that you go and call the security guards or inform the police so that, you know, they get ready um, to arrest them. No. They come when, you know, you least expect them. In the same way, that is how our Lord Jesus Christ will come. So, my brothers and sisters, and I'm speaking to myself, the word is for me as well. For me, a wake up call okay to look into myself and to make sure that i detach myself from certain things which displeases our master hallelujah so this afternoon i want you to also look into yourself and take a firm stand that moving forward you also want to be alert you want to be vigilant. You want to be sober. Serious with your Christian life. So, brethren, we need to be watchful, as I said, and serious. And that calls for a stubborn de determination not to give an inch of true gospel ground. Regardless of changes in societal values, morals, and government policies. You and I know the changes in society, the morals, all the things going on. You know them. I don't need to mention them. This LGBT and, you know, other things, policies that governments are putting in place, which is in contradiction with the word of God. We need to be alert of these things because we can't afford to fall into the danger of losing our souls to hell. Even as the lack of watchfulness, you know, whilst driving can cause you an accident, a lack of vigilance and seriousness is perilous to your soul. Now, let me tell you just four ways that can help you stay alert. Four ways. One, through unceasing prayer. Through unceasing prayer. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. To pray without ceasing. Now, when you cease to pray, you become weak. The saying goes that, a prayerless Christian is what? A powerless Christian. So when you cease to pray, you become weak and you become susceptible to sin. You become susceptible to the devil. And, you know, he can just easily devour you. He can just easily roar, not just roar, but pounce at you. So it's not a matter of saying this week I've prayed once and that's it. You pray on Monday and then the next time you pray is Sunday when we are here. You have to develop an altar in your home. 
set up an altar in your home and get dedicated times. I'm not saying set times like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., but have time, my brothers and sisters, to pray so that you receive strength from God to be able to stand the test of time. The second thing that I want to recommend to you to help you stay alert is through worship. You know, worship causes us to remain in the presence of God. When you, have, you get up and you feel, you know, down, you feel something, you know, evil lingering into your mind, wanting to do something that you should not do, just worship God. Worship God. Let the let flow, worship God. Go in the presence of God. And by doing that, you realize that you become alert. You become strong. Your focus is on things above, not on earthly things. Hallelujah. So, worship is another way of staying alert. The other that I want to recommend to you is through daily study of the word. Daily, not weekly, not monthly. Daily study of the word. The Bible says that we should meditate on the word day and night. You study it, you meditate on it, and then the Holy Spirit drops things into you. Through studying the word, you remain alert because you have studied the word. And so when someone comes to you with myths, with philosophies, with ideologies, you are able to go back to the Bible, to the scripture that you have read, and take your stand and say, no, that is not what the word of my Lord is saying. And you are able to detach yourself from every evil. Now when Jesus Christ was tempted on the mountain by Satan, he overcame with scriptures. You know, Satan was using scriptures. And he used scriptures to also counteract him. And victory was his. Hallelujah. So we can stay alert by reading our scriptures. Please, let's cultivate a habit of having time. Now the world, you know, is running fast, 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 spiraling. Fast! But sometimes... It's just like, oh, thank you, Lord. And then you pick your bag and then we are off. Please, let us have time, dedicated time, and study the word of God. That will bring salvation. That will help us, you know, um, work on our salvation and be able to stand firm on our grounds and do what is right and be able to resist, you know, the enemy. When, when you read First Peter 5, 9, it says resist him. So that will also help us to resist the enemy. The fourth thing is through fellowship with other believers. Through fellowship with other believers. You know, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. When I come here and presiding preaches, Elder Malfu preaches, uh, Elder Frank preaches, you know, people preach. Or even in worship, as Mammy Mary worships, Auntie Nancy worships, you know, it lifts me up when I come into fellowship like this and I'm weak. When I go home, I receive strength for the week. Anytime I come here, I tell you, I receive strength for the, for, for, for the week ahead because I've come to a place where I'm being sharpened, where I'm worshiping with believers, where the presence of God, it says where two or three or more are gathered, that is where God is. And that should not be only a church. Even midweek, visiting people, you can still fellowship, singing hymns, praying together, you know, and then by that, you stay alert. Because what it is, is 
if you are in the midst of believers, sometimes for people, it serves as a check for them. You know, when you fellowship with believers, it becomes hard for you to do certain things which are evil, right? <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Because you, you wouldn't want to go and do something and everybody would say, hey, preside him. <laughs> so it's a check on us as well. It makes us alert. No, I won't do this. This thing, hey, I said, Dickness, Dickness, Mary, pa, nah. <laughs> you got it. People will say that, you know, I've gone to do this. I've gone. No, no, no. I become alert. No, I wouldn't want members to say that of me. So I stay right. So please, let us, neglect, let us not neglect the meet, meeting of the saints together, fellowshipping together. Don't just say, mm, today, I don't want to go to church. Don't let the devil deceive you. As much as you can, I know that for some people, because of their work schedules, or sometimes because of other, you know, really reasonable and, you know, commitments, they can't, but never let the devil deceive you by saying, oh, today, dear, I don't think, just because you, you, don't, you, don't, you just don't want to come. It's raining. It's raining, but you go running after the bus, chasing to go and get your pound in a week. Do you stay at home? No, we don't. So, snow or no snow, we'll come to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you so much. In saying this, let me also say, add that let us stay alert for each other. Let us be each other's keeper. Let us carry each other along so that none of us, none of us will be lost. Let us love each other because of the love that Jonathan had for David. You know, Jonathan was able to support David to take action against the evil plan of King Saul. So let's love, because if I love you, I don't, I don't want, you know, something evil to happen to you. I don't want you to end up, you know, losing your soul. It's my prayer that each and every one of us here, and those listening to me through all the social media handles, will never be lost to the devil. But then, Eden Farm Church, will be a rapturable one. Hallelujah. That all of us, when the trumpet sounds, we will all be lifted up. Those who are dead would also rise up and then we would also be caught up with them. That none of us, none of us, will lose our souls to the enemy in Jesus' name. You didn't say the amen well, oh. And then you see, we say, man, sin is here, cry. Anyway, right. We'll continue. I'll finish very soon and we'll pray. So, I would want us to read the three other key scriptures. Because we just looked at 1 Peter 5 8. 1 Peter 4 7. 1 Peter 4 7. Let's read that too. So, it says, The end of all times is near. Therefore, be clear-minded. In some of the, um, what is it, translations, is this NIV? The New King James or King James says, Therefore, I think it says, Therefore, be alert or watchful. Some of the, um, um, what is it, versions. Good. So, Good. Which, which um, <laughs> translation is that? New King James, good. <laughs> that is the one that I think I looked at when I was going through my message. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Hallelujah. Be serious and watchful. Let's read 1 Peter 1, 13 to 15 as well. 1 Peter 1, 13 to 15. 
1 Peter 1, 13 to 15 says, Therefore, get up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. Some of the versions says, you know, be alert. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former last, as in, ignor in your ignorance, but as he who has called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Hallelujah. Let's read 1 Corinthians 16, 13 as well. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says that, Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Lastly, let's read Matthew 24, verse 4, and then 10 to 14. Matthew 24, verse 4. Right. It says, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. Hmm? Because <laughs> nowadays, sometimes the way that people interpret things, sometimes, you know, I, I, when I'm chatting with some friends and they are in a situation and the way people and even, you know, some pastors, I'm not talking about, well, pastors somewhere, the way they would encourage them and tell them certain things, when you, you, you put it, you know, in, alongside scripture, you realize that, no, it's not a good advice. They are deceiving them. So, watch out that no one deceives you. That is why it is important for you to know your scriptures, to study the word. Because most people like spoon feeding. They want all the time pastors, leaders to feed them with the word. But you've got to read the word yourself. Now let's read the 10 to 14. The 10 to 14 says, At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. That's the last message I'm leaving with you when you go read and meditate on it. See, in the last days, many prophets will come. Evil and wickedness is abounding. And it says that the love of many will what's cold. That is why, you know, this word has hit me so much. And it's my prayer that I'll carry it along my Christian journey. Because I can't afford to lose what, you know, I've done for, for all these years. I think in one of the um, passages, Paul says that you have to guard what we worked for so that you don't lose it. So whatever, brethren, you have worked for all these years as a Christian, guard it because ter terrible times, wicked times are ahead of us. So you've got to be alert and watchful. In conclusion, I want to make reference to the theme of the year. It says, a glorious church revived to possess the nations. Let us ensure that we are spiritually alert and sober at all times. So that after winning souls and possessing the nations, we will not be disqualified when Jesus comes. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We have an uncle that keeps the soul steadfast and sure was the below's throne fast into the rock which cannot move from the firm and deep in the same yes we have an uncle we 
the word of God today and in this time and in this season this is what God has for us we should be alert and sober we should be alert of the schemes of the enemy we should be alert of the things of the flesh that we, we, we cannot let go of God is telling us to let go and concentrate on things of God on heavenly things, things that will bring us eternal life, things that will set us apart, things that will make us children of God. Let's pray and thank God for his word unto us. Father Lord, we thank you this afternoon, O God, for your word to your children. We are forever grateful, O God. Father, thank you so much, O God, for reminding us who we are. We are your chosen ones, O God. And therefore, we should be alert and sober. Father, Lord, thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God. Thank you, O God, for reminding us of the season that we are in, of the things that the enemy is doing. Thank you so much, O God. Thank you, O Lord. We can't thank you enough, O God. For you have called us, O God. You have cautioned us this afternoon, O God. And we are forever grateful. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. We thank you. We also want to pray. And ask God to open our eyes. Give us the spirit of discernment. So that we'll be able to detach ourselves from things that does not please God. I know the things that I'm doing that are not pleasing unto God, and you also know yours. We are all not perfect. That's why this word has come unto us. So we want to come before him and pray that he should open our eyes so that we will be able to live a blameless life according to his will and his purpose for us. Let's pray. Father, we come before you as your children, O God. Just as your word has come unto us. Father, Lord, we want to be able to know the schemes of the enemy. And the things, of God, that does not, O oh God, live for you. Father, Lord, we pray this afternoon. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. Father, open our eyes, O oh God, unto things, O oh God, that will set us apart, O oh God, from every other thing, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, pray tonight, O oh God. Father, help us, O oh God. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Father, Lord, reveal unto us, O oh God, things that we should, we should be able to set us apart, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray. Help us. Help us. Help us. This afternoon, that's our prayer, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Reveal unto us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to be the Deborah of our generation. We want to be the Phinehas of our generation. We want to be the Abrahams of our generation. So, Father Lord, help us. Help us, O oh God, in our work with you. So that we will not miss our providential way. So that we will not miss heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We want to pray and ask God. To give us a spirit, his Holy Spirit, so that we will hunger for things that are of him. We want to pray more. We want to read his word more. We want to be Christians, like we want to live the life of Christ, just as he intended us to be. So let's pray. Father Lord, we pray, O oh God, committing ourselves unto your hands, O oh God. Father, Lord, you have opened our eyes unto things that we have been compromising, O oh God. And Father, we pray this afternoon, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to be able to overcome this compromise in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father Lord, we pray, help us, O God, to be able to hunger for you, O God. More of you, we pray. More of your strength, we pray. More of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Father Lord, we pray, fall afresh on us. Give us oil in our lamps, O God. Ignite us in the mighty name of Jesus. Set us ablaze, O God, for your things in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, we want to go the extra mile for you. We want to do more for you, O God. And Father Lord, we need your spirit to be able to do that. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Holy Spirit, come and do your work in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, fill us, O God, anew. Make us anew, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, oh, fall afresh on me. to help us to live for Christ in this season. To live for Christ in this season. And I just want you to remember a story about Lot and his wife. About Sodom and Gomorrah. When God wanted to destroy the place. Because the, the, that, that, that's, those cities were filled with um, too much evil. Lord said to, Lord said to the men, because when the angel of men went to Sodom and Gomorrah, the men wanted to sleep with them. But God said to the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, I have two virgin daughters. I have two virgin daughters. So in that time, even when there were evil going all around, there were virgins. They did not make themselves filthy. They stayed for Christ. They lived for Christ. This is our prayer. We want to live for Christ. In this time and in this season, we are not going to let the enemy take over. We know who we are. We know our identity. So we want to pray. That we want to live for Christ. Even with everything that is going on around us. Sometimes you look around and you think, Oh, so so and so is doing this. So it's all right. It's not all right. It's not all right. We are children of God. We should live for Christ. Let this be our prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to live for you and live for you alone, O God. Father Lord, help us, O God. To live for you. To be, to, to be useful unto you, O oh God. In your vineyard, O oh God. Let us, O oh God, help us, O oh God. To be the Abrahams of our generation. Or to be the Phinehas of our generation. To be the disciples of our generation. To be the Pauls of our generation. To be the Timothys of our, of, 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 of our generation. The Joannes, the Salomites. This is our prayer, O oh Lord. This is our prayer, O oh God. Help us. Help us. We want to pray for ourselves. We want to pray for ourselves this time. Sometimes the enemy try to take away our joy. To take our, way, to take our minds away from the bigger things that God is doing in our lives. And sometimes we wonder when we ask, is God there? Does God see? Does God hear? Does God really love me? 
if you have ever asked these questions, even for a second, I want you to pray to God now. That he will never let you, I mean, go away from your faith. That you will stand firm in the Lord. Regardless of what the enemy is doing. Regardless of what the enemy is taking away from you. God is able to replenish it unto you. Remember the story of Job and how God did for him. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, you know us, oh God. And you know the things, oh God, that we love to do. Father, we come before you, oh God. Father, you know our desires, oh God. Father, if any, there's anything that the, the enemy has taken away, Father, we pray, oh Lord, for your restoration. We pray, oh Lord, for your restoration. We pray, oh Lord, for your restoration. And Father, we believe and trust in the promises, oh God, that you have said in the, in the good book, in the Bible, oh God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than even things that we can even dream of. Father, Lord, we pray this afternoon, O God. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, O God. And Father, let us be able to see, O God, what you are doing, O God. And not allow the enemy to take away our joy or our identity. We thank you, O Lord, for hearing us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you this afternoon, O God, for your grace, O God, and for your faithfulness towards your church. We are forever grateful, O oh God, and thank you for your word that has come, O oh God, to caution, to caution us that indeed, O oh God, we need to be alert and sober. In this season that we live in, we need to be alert and sober for your second coming, O oh God. Father Lord, we pray, O oh God, help us, O oh God, to detach ourselves from things that does not please you, things that brings you shame, O oh God. Let us be on fire. Let us be ablaze, O oh God, for you and for you alone. Father Lord, we pray, O oh God, committing ourselves unto your hands. Father Lord, if anyone who is brokenhearted, Father Lord, because of your spirit, we send healing unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, if anyone is sad, Father Lord, because of your spirit, we send them comfort in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, if anyone out there, O oh God, is looking unto you for anything, O oh God, Father, we pray that you will hear unto them, just as you did unto Hannah, just as you did unto Jabez, just as you did, O oh God, unto the people of God. Father, Lord, give us testimonies, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let us stand here and say that has it not been the Lord, where would we have been? We thank you, O oh Lord, for being with us and for protecting us and always being the, our heavenly Father, the loving Father as you are. We thank you so much for hearing us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.